You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and uh, check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to please subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Over at IT Wire, the Free Software Foundation marks 30 years of free software movement. That's right. Founder Richard Stallman, pictured above, there's a picture of him, uh, has lost none of the fire that had burned in his belly three decades ago when he walked out of a highly paid job with the dream of creating a free operating system that could be used by everyone. He never got as far as the as he never got as far as building the kernel itself, but had along with those who joined him, made plenty of progress on all the other bits and pieces needed. When the Linux kernel was released, that provided the heart for what came to be called GNU slash Linux, the kernel plus all the bits and pieces built by the free software crowd, which is why most, uh, uh, well, which is why the Free Software Foundation insists that when you have a Linux distribution, it's not just called Linux, it's GNU Linux, because it's a combination of Linux, which is the kernel, and all of the GNU stuff that, that goes along with it that makes up the rest of the operating system. So anyway, uh, pretty interesting. I thought this was a neat write-up and uh, thought I'd share it uh, with my audience for those that may want to read it. From the National Monitor, Valve is unveiling a new PC gaming controller. Now, uh, seem to keep getting some goop or something on my lips. Uh, on the last episode, we talked about uh, Valve uh, releasing Steam OS, which was based on Linux, and they have since announced new hardware and this gaming controller to go along with that. So pretty interesting. Definitely uh, give it a read, especially if you're looking to get into, uh, you know, trying Steam OS or anything of that nature, the Steam machine, um, and plus this gaming controller. Um, there's no joysticks or anything like that. Pretty interesting, uh, controller, believe it or not. It actually looks like a practice drum pad or something, but anyway, um, definitely check it out if that's, if gaming is your thing. From techienews.co.uk, Oracle has unveiled an open source tablet that's called the Duke Pad. Uh, at the Java One Conference technical keynote, Oracle unveiled DukePad, a prototype tablet powered by the Raspberry Pi, running the Raspbian Linux operating system and featuring an interface using Java SE8. DukePad, as Oracle claims, is not a product and has been designed as an open source do-it-yourself project and will be released as freely available set of plans and software for assembling your own tablet using off-the-shelf components. I think this is the coolest thing ever. This is awesome. So definitely check this out, especially if you'd like to have a tablet that's not necessarily based on Android or iOS. This may be a great way, may not necessarily be the slimmest tablet or the sleekest looking tablet, but it'll be your tablet, which is the best way to have a tablet if you're into having things your way. So definitely look at it. From a mid-size insider, Citrix is making its Zen server open source. Uh, Citrix has announced its intention to release binaries and source code to the public. The Zen server open source cloud will give programmers and hobbyists a way to tinker with the cloud server's capabilities and hopefully add to its security, functionality, and overall scalability. Most people have heard of Amazon Web Services and Rackspace's OpenStack Cloud, but according to ZDNet, what most people don't know is that Citrix Zen servers are the backbone of their architecture. Citrix also supports and donates its software to the Apache Software Foundation and put its core Zen server project under the Linux Foundation's control. So this 
move is particularly good for mid-sized businesses that host Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, otherwise known as a LAMP stack. Uh, these are technologies uh, that a business can customize uh, and IT managers can contribute to the increasing open source knowledge base. So having all the, you know, all the underpinnings that that runs on top of open source as well is definitely a good thing. From Lifehacker, VLC adds better porting to mobile, a dozen new codecs and more. There's a new version of VLC out for Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's uh, version 2.1. It packs a ton of new features, including significant improvements to how it handles outputting videos to mobile devices like Android and iPhone and more. Pretty awesome. Definitely check it out. Uh, I've been a long-time user of VLC, and I have to say it's pretty sweet. From v3.co.uk, SUSE updates its OpenStack cloud build with easier deployment and Hyper-V integration. Linux developer has released a new build of its cloud computing platform. It's based on the OpenStack framework, adding new capabilities to make deployment easier. It's also the first OpenStack distribution to add full support for Microsoft's Hyper-V. Available now, SUSE Cloud 2.0 is an updated version of the firm's enterprise-ready OpenStack distribution for building private infrastructure as a service cloud computing environments. So definitely pretty neat, especially if you are a SUSE shop. From virtualstrategy.com, Zero Weight inks a reseller agreement with Red Hat Server with Red Hat Storage Server Group. Uh, Houston, Texas, Zero Weight has announced that they have signed a reseller agreement with Red Hat to offer both Red Hat Storage Server and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. The agreement enables Zero Weight to offer its customers turnkey storage solutions via a single point of contact support. So definitely pretty awesome. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. You can subscribe uh, via a variety of ways. Uh, all of them are linked up in the show notes. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.